5,000 homes, 800 shops, and 40 churches, all torn down in the name of urban renewal. John Jessup traveled to St. Louis to highlight how a once thriving neighborhood faced extinction. The typical Saturday morning sights and sounds of Soulard Market, a St. Louis neighborhood attraction serving a hearty mix of art, culture, and Midwestern appeal. St. Louis, with its picturesque, one-of-a-kind skyline, was once deemed a forerunner in city planning. Some now believe the legacy of urban renewal is at least partly responsible for some of the city's current problems. A short drive through downtown, and you begin to see the divided city, as shown in this BBC report. You got million-dollar opportunity here. You have no e economic opportunity here. A hundred years ago, people saw a place of opportunity, first drawing European immigrants, then black southerners seeking work and education in the Great Migration. Many settled in a neighborhood called Mill Creek Valley. So describe the type of people who lived here. We had our teachers, our doctors, our lawyers, uh, grocery stores, business people. Your school teacher may have gone to your church. Vivian Gibson wrote a book about her carefree childhood here, memories now overshadowed by vacant lots like these and construction sites eerily similar to the 1960s when the community was raised, bulldozed by what neighbors called the headache ball. Because it made so much noise. So we would sit there and watch this big machine on a crane toss this real big heavy uh, ball and knock the house down. It's pretty much a textbook example of exactly what they wanted to do. Nathan Jackson gives walking tours of the city and compares the stately homes and streets in nearby Soulard and Lafayette Square to Mill Creek before city leaders tore it down. He doesn't get quite the same uh, lens cast on him as Robert Moses, but Harlan Bartholomew arguably uh, did equal amounts of damage, if not more. As the country's first full-time city planner, Harlan Bartholomew spent nearly 40 years retooling St. Louis, advocating for slum clearance and highways that spurred white flight and urban decay. Harlan Bartholomew is extremely interesting because of the influence he had on almost every city in the United States. Experts say he used zoning laws to target poor and predominantly black areas like Mill Creek. And imagine living in that community and then it being transformed um, so that now you have liquor stores in your community or brothels in your community. And that meant disinvestment. Vivian's book paints a picture far from what the city called blighted. But to me, it seems counter to the description of the area when they were listing it as blighted, they called it slums. It doesn't sound like that. Well, that was important to be able to tear it down. People had to be, voters had to vote on a bond issue. And it's a lot easier to tear down a slum than it is to tear down a community of 20,000 working people. The decision erased 5,000 homes, 800 shops, and 40 churches forcing 20,000 people like Vivian and Lois's families to search for new homes. They had few options, however, due to housing covenants limiting where blacks could live. So finding a place to relocate with eight children um, that they, one, could afford and that they felt was going to be safe and nurturing for us was, was quite a challenge. Using data focused on black movement and growth, Bartholomew repeated this pattern in designs for more than 500 cities and counties. Right here, he called for large urban expressways going through the downtown areas. And in this case, he built one 18 blocks straight through the black community. Richmond is just one of the hundreds of cities where Bartholomew laid out his plans, which often included the destruction of homes, businesses, and churches. Six Mount Zion Baptist Church was supposed to be removed in the 1950s to make way for a nearby highway. Founded more than 200 years ago, the church is still standing in this historic black Richmond neighborhood. 
Reverend Ben Campbell, author of Richmond's Unhealed History, tells CBN News it survived because of one attentive city employee. The black woman who was an elevator operator in City Hall and a member of Six Mount Zion Church, as she ran that elevator up and down every day and listened to the city planners talk about what they were going to do with the expressway, she informed the congregation and the black community's only victory in this entire project was to get this road moved 10 feet in this direction so that Six Mount Zion Church would not be torn down. So all of this is Mill Creek. Back in St. Louis, we drove to the lone church left standing in Vivian's old neighborhood. While many blacks are leaving to seek opportunity elsewhere, the children of Mill Creek now seasoned seniors say they're staying to safeguard their stories. If everybody leaves, uh, who then does the work? How, where even is the hope that change could occur? So I'm here for the long haul, um, both in St. Louis and both here at the Grio. Beyond the walls of the museum Lois created to preserve the city's black history, doors are beginning to open to change. Every place has a history, and this is part of ours. Last February, the city's new soccer team, located in what was the Mill Creek Valley, hosted a dedication, giving surviving residents the first look at a new memorial, capturing their quotes and cherished memories, now on display for all to see. And so I feel like we've like snatched it back from from just disappearing completely. Progress looks different depending on perspective, and here in St. Louis, some are making a concerted effort to redefine what it means by embracing the past, and that includes this Pillars of the Valley monument, which stands as a memorial to remember and honor a painful chapter in the city's history, and to start conversations about how to avoid similar mistakes to pave a brighter and stronger future for everyone. John Jessup, St. Louis, Missouri, CBN News. Well, let me underline, let's not make similar mistakes. And when you look at what happened uh, to historically black communities by so-called city planners, uh, they were actually planning their destruction. They weren't planning to how to make them thrive. So why is the city of Richmond one of the poorest cities in the state of Virginia? Well, this is why. Why is St. Louis seeing an exodus of people? This is why. If we want to build strong communities, we need to support them. If we want to understand how do we get in this mess, we need to know this history. And the reason is so that we don't repeat the same mistakes. And one of the biggest mistakes I think we're, we're coming up to in our culture today is somehow we think the government's going to do a better job than the average citizen. And we're going to rely on some government program uh, in order to solve all our problems. Central planning hasn't worked in the history of mankind. It doesn't work that way. It comes up through families, through communities, through neighborhoods. That's how you grow and that's how you